I should be writing number 402 for the week of November 12th. Well, I should be writing. I should be working on my Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing the Podcast for Wannabe Fiction Writers. I'm your host, Murr Lafferty. And what I've been up to, I've been writing. I realized yesterday that um, since September of last year, I have had two projects really weighing on me heavily. One of them I can't announce yet, but the other one was the solo novelization. And I didn't realize how stressed I was until those projects were done and I realized I can slow down a little bit. And the stupid thing about allowing yourself to slow down is you relax and you're actually able to do more. So believe it or not, I am actually almost on pace for NaNoWriMo. Yesterday I was ahead of pace and then decided to not write very much because I'd had a rough day on Saturday and needed some uh, time off. And so now I'm behind, but I'm only about 500 words behind. I'm recording this on the 12th, and the goal for the end of the day is 20,000 words, and I'm at 19,472. This is a new project. It's another mur murder mystery in space, but no clones. It is not in the Six Wakes universe. I won't talk a lot about NaNoWriMo. If you're interested in me talking about NaNoWriMo, I am doing a daily show for my Patreon subscribers. That's all of them, even the ones at the $1 level. If you pledge a dollar on Patreon, then you get a daily show in November where I talk about doing the NaNoWriMo purge, which is throwing all of the rules of writing out the window, and we're breaking all the laws, and it's been a lot of fun. Also, if you donate at the $5 level, you get access to our Discord, which is, um, Discord is a chat service mainly for gamers, but it's really just a chat service, so you don't have to do any sort of gaming to be involved, and, um, we have, we talk about writing, we talk about NaNoWriMo, we talk about stuff, and we do, uh, word sprints which is very useful during NaNoWriMo. And I've had more than one person say that it's the word sprints with the other people in the Discord that are actually helping them stay on uh, pace this year. So there's that little advertisement. But another thing I've been doing is I got the new book, Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And if you're familiar with Save the Cat... It is a screenwriting book from, I think, 2003 or so? I can't remember exactly when it was written, but it was uh, almost immediately heralded as a brilliant breakdown of proper storytelling and screenwriting. And I've read several of the books, and, you know, because it's storytelling, it, it you can easily take the advice for screenwriters and put it into a novel. But now someone has taken the Save the Cat method and actually turned it into a novel, a novel writing book. So there's the new book is Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And it's, it's really good. I'm really, really enjoying it. The problem with it is it's still... The Save the Cat Beat Sheet, which is where in the movie or the novel should different things come, whether it's the statement of the theme or the uh, the point where everything changes at the break of Act 1 and Act 2, the point where everything changes at the break of Act 2 and Act 3, all that stuff. And then it also takes many popular books 
and describes how each of them fit the beat sheet, but also breaks books into ten categories and describes how each of them is a little bit different and specific. And I found this fascinating. One of the genres is... Um, Oh crap, I can't remember exactly the name, but it's something like The Fool. The Fool or the Underdog Succeeds. Where a completely normal person stumbles around and still manages to win in the end. Bridget Jones' Diary is the example they use. So, Save the Cat is not advertising on this show. I'm just finding a lot of uh, interesting advice from it. But one thing, kind of what I want to talk about is, I know a lot of people who rail against the hero's journey, or the Save the Cat beat sheet, or something like that, because they don't like formulas. And I can see that, but there are... There are two metaphors that work with this. One is building a building, and the other one is baking a cake, which is every single cake or every single building has basic ingredients. If you're not there with your flour, eggs, and sugar, you're not going to have a very good cake. If you don't have your foundations and your windows and your roof, you're not going to have a very good building. Can brilliant, artistic visionaries make a flourless chocolate cake? Of course. Can they build a building that is more of an art thing than a functioning thing and call it a building? Yes. But this is more advanced work, not something you should rail against on the beginner level. In the beginner level, you need to learn how to work with that, the basic cake ingredients, and then you can add things and make it your own. And when people know they're going to eat a cake, they're going to expect some things. If you throw in a bunch of savory elements because you're not going to follow the save the cake method, the people are not going to praise your visionary thing. They're going to go, what the hell is this meat doing in my cake? So that's how I see the Save the Cat beat sheet. It's a foundation... It's a storytelling method. And there are so many popular movies and books that follow these formula almost exactly that it's kind of hard to say it's not something you should do. Because There are books that are critical successes and books that are popular successes, commercial successes, that's the word I'm looking for. Books that are heavily commercial success, successes and they all follow the beat sheet. And it's not saying that J.K. Rowling sat down with the Save the Cat method because she wrote Harry Potter before Save the Cat came out, but Harry Potter follows the Save the Cat beat sheet. And if you want to say, okay, well, that's commercial success, well, so does the Kite Runner. So if you want, you can rail against it. You can try to go out on your own beat. You can, you know, throw the conflict and the climax in the first scene and resolve it by the second scene and then have the third scene be the people fall in love then put the beginning of the book somewhere in the middle and maybe you'll be hailed as an artistic visionary but I really don't want to read it the powerful thing about story is that this is what we mean when we say we want the same thing but different if someone tells you they want a completely new story, they're lying. Because if you give them something that doesn't have the beats that people expect, 
you know, the part near the end when the hero just almost completely gives up because everything's going very, very, very poorly? When the romantic interest walks out? When the hero's arrested? When the bomb's about to go off? All that stuff, that... that You know that the movie doesn't end there. So, slightly different topic, but the same. See? Same but different. Um, while I love the concept of the Save the Cat beat sheet, and I'm learning a lot, especially by um, the breakdown of the popular books, many of which I've read, to, um, to see how Save the Cat works with those stories. I still am terrible at outlining. It's like, for example, the scene I wrote today, I knew that my character was going to discover the dead body. I did not know that the crime scene was about to be erased and she would only get out of there with one piece of evidence until I started writing it. Those kinds of ideas just don't come to me. So my plan for Save the Cat and my current novel is to write the rough draft and then look at the Save the Cat beat sheet and see how I can, see how it fits and then think about massaging it on edits for the beats to happen at the right time. Because I've actually found outlines useful while editing. Because it helps having, you know, this happens in this scene and this happens in this scene just laid out. That's how I did, um, that's how I crafted Six Wakes. I, near the end I was just about to tear my hair out. It was another edit. And so finally I took every single scene in the book and I wrote down what happens on an index card and I spread them all out on the office floor and move them around to where I thought the proper emotional beat and the proper um, information revealed should happen. And that worked out pretty well. So a bit of announcement. This weekend, on Saturday, I'll be at Books with the Past in Glenwood, Maryland, for a NaNoWriMo event. So if you're in the area and you want to come say hi, that's where I'll be. I believe the event starts at 3. So I'll be doing some talking and some signing, and then we're going to have a write-in. So it sounds like fun. Should be. So if you're around, I would love to meet you. If you want to know more about me, you can go to merverse.com. The site is going to be going through a redesign I've had a couple of complaining emails that the site's not very good, and I know. But you should know, I'm working on it. I'm addressing it. My other podcast, the Hugo Award-winning Ditch Diggers, can also be found there. I do that about the business of writing with my friend Matt Wallace. If you want to read my books, the most recent ones are the novelization of the Solo movie and Six Wakes, which is also science fiction, and I Should Be Writing, which is a book based on this podcast of The Craft of Writing. And if you haven't had enough Murr projects, I'm also writing on Book Burners, which is the very first cereal box project. That's S-E-R-I-A-L. And I am the co-editor of Escape Pod, where we give out free audio short stories every week. I wear a lot of hats. It's hard to remember all the hats, but I wear them. So, if you're doing NaNoWriMo, I hope it's going well. If you're not doing NaNoWriMo, I hope you're still writing. And if you're doing NaNoWriMo and it's not going well, keep doing it because you're still writing. And I'll see you next time because you should be writing. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing the theme music provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license.